First of all, if I could probably get uh, Phil back up here doing an auction, we could have probably auctioned off Press Manuals jersey. He told me he would probably get about $1,000 for his. And so if, if we do this again next year, I guarantee you I'll try to do that. <laughs> Matter of fact, we would have probably tried to do it back when we were in high school because Press and I played together. We would have auctioned off right then because the rest of us might have got the basketball and uh, because he, he didn't like to pass it too much. Not an assist man. That's right. <laughs> Well, it's a, really an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to speak about Charlie Manuel tonight. I've heard many Fuke Manuel stories over the years, and I'd like to just add one more to those. A couple of years ago, I'd asked Press, I said, Press, let's go up to Philadelphia and watch a game, uh, because a few years before that, we'd gone to Cleveland and had a real good time. So he said, really, we can't do it. He said, I got a bad weekend, but you and the boys go ahead and go. Well, the boys and I went and went to the dugout and I asked one of the security personnel to give Fook one of our six-man PM shirts uh, to Charlie Manuel. As a matter of fact, I said, Fook, and he said, who? I said, Charlie. He, and then he said, do you want him to sign it? I said, no, sir. I want you to give it to him for luck. Matter of fact, I think the Phillies are ready to run him off and he may lose his job. He said, well, you're right there. I said, we're in a losing streak. And I said, well, the trouble is, he's wearing the wrong colors. I said, y'all got him with red. He said, sir, where are you from? I said, uh, Buena Vista. He said, Buena Vista? I said, no, Buena Vista. <laughs> he said, again, you want him to give, give him a shirt, not to sign it. I said, man, you have to tell people up north a number of things over and over, don't you? <laughs> he said, if I do that, what can you promise? I said, do I have to guarantee something? He said, yes, you do. I said, well, I guarantee you'll win this game tonight if he wears that blue sh uh, shirt because you'll see the fighting blues. It's a blue shirt. He said, well, that's not enough. I said, okay. Not only will you win this game tonight, he's got a really a goal of his. I said, you'll win the World Series. He said, man, we haven't won the World Series since 1980. Can you guarantee that? I said, you give it to him. I said, they're going to win. Well, he gives him the shirt. Food comes out right before the game. We speak a moment. And he said, thank you, thank you for the shirt. Ryan Howard hit a home run in the bottom of the 10th, walk-off home run, and the rest is history. And really, Fook, the Phillies can send him a World Series ring in the mail. That'd be fine. <laughs> but Charlie Manuel has been an inspiration to many of us over the years. His work ethic is extraordinary, and his career in basketball at Perry McClure, he scored 1,250 points. He averaged 23.8 points a game, and I remember being in, in the gym at the old 24th Street for the first time when I was in the third grade, and I see this guy come across half court, left-hander, and just lighten it up. And I watched how intensely he played the game, and that motivated me and along with a lot of other kids at that time. I have used him as example in many of our pregame talks throughout the years. Even when I, I got pressed to ask him when he played his first game, and he didn't, didn't know right at the time, he remembered that whatever game he played in the seventh grade, but his first high school game was December the 3rd, 1959, against Wilson Memorial. And on that date, we beat Wilson Memorial 82 to 31. Press. Okay. He scored a few more points than you at that time. Probably not. Okay. <laughs> now, at that time, Fook had eight points in that particular game. And most of the games, he had, later on in his career, he scored 30-some and would have 20-some with rebounds. He scored eight points as his first year playing, as the first game as a freshman. Wendell Coleman scored 10. That might have been the first game and only game in history that Wendell scored more than Press. I mean, more than Fook. Incidentally, Fook, uh, we played Wilson on Monday night, and I think you've got a few more games of eligibility, and I need another three-point shooter. <laughs> but we would not be here tonight with Fook if it wasn't for a number of people, but mainly because of someone with a strong relationship with Charlie, Mr. Joe Downing. Joe was a friend of all of us and was someone we greatly admired. He was a person much like Charlie, 
great, greatly admired. He had a great work ethic. He was down to earth, passionate, and someone who inspired others. I would like to read a letter of recommendation that I asked Joe to write several years ago on Fuchs' behalf. To whom it may concern, Charles Manuel. In the summer of 1959, a long, lanky young boy showed up for American Legion baseball. The coaches soon recognized his special talent. Charlie Kurtz and Gene Mahaffey, and these were both great coaches, guided this talented player into being an outstanding baseball and basketball player. He also displayed his abilities in football and was an end on the Fighting Blues undefeated football team of 1960. Charles was intrinsically motivated and had an inherent ability to motivate those around him. This special talent has provided him with the ability to be a great major league baseball manager. His leadership style is not in getting players to follow him, but getting them to join him. People around the world have recognized his contribution to baseball. Signed, Joe Downing, former football coach, athletic director, Fair McClure High School from 1958 to 1960. And it's with pride on behalf of Perry McClure High School that we retire Charlie Manuel's basketball jersey tonight. And I give you our guest speaker, Charlie Manuel.